Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to show you a 25 minute excerpt from one of our premium tutorials. It's it's a series now, which we've been working on for a little bit, which is um, it's one where we're showing how to do a creature sculpt from start to finish in about an hour and a half. It's showing how to do a bust of like a Lord of Rings style orc. Mm. And um, we just go from, from a very basic base mesh, which is provided in the series, to just uh, a fairly refined concept sculpt of the bust here. Yeah. So, like we said, 25 minutes, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank you, guys. The nice thing about starting from a base mesh like this is that you get a lot of stuff for free. Yeah, yeah, you really do. Uh, one thing is starting from a sphere, which can also be nice, it's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Um, but starting from a base mesh, you just you just have something to lay your portions on top immediately. Yeah. Um, you know, it really takes a lot of the guesswork out of the out of the sculpting process yeah. in the beginning. For sure. Uh, with the way I'm doing ears, people kind of seem to forget to do ears. <laughs> you see those like beautiful sculpts, and then there is something missing, and it's ears. So w the way I like to do this is I um, prefer to just mask it out, invert the mask. And then just drag it out using like the move brush. This is gonna be pretty brutal. This is gonna look super nice because we gotta we just gotta dynamesh it. because uh, you can see that the pole here is getting crazy stretched now. So uh, let's just clear the mask and just uh, re-dynamesh it now. Now you see it becomes nice and even. So let's just shape the ears a little bit here. So in terms of what we're actually sculpting, this is kind of like a bit of like a freestyle concept sculpting here. We don't really have a whole lot of uh, reference here. This is not where we, we know exactly what we're going to be doing. It's going to be more like a design process. Uh, what we do know is that it's going to be some kind of Lord of the Rings style orc, which is quite different from like an orc from um, like the, War the World of Warcraft series, which is more like, um, it's more like a gorilla style. This is more humanoid. I'm also thinking that the orc here is maybe he's like of a lower rank. He's not like a general. He's maybe he's like a foot soldier. Soldier. So he's got that northern British accent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why the whenever they're lower rank, they always have to have a British accent, and it always has to be that farmer's. Yeah, sort of, exactly. You sound like a pirate. <laughs> like you, ne you never get sort of like the low ranks in the evil armies to have like American accents. No, that, no, that never happens. No. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Exactly. Like, why is that? I don't why, know. Why, why, where was that decision made? To make, okay, it needs to be that stereotypical British thing. <laughs> I don't know. So when working here, like, it's it's a very standard workflow here. It's it's no smooth brush. You can use smooth brush if you want to. It's just um, sticking to clay build up, blocking in the main shapes here. Mm. Like first, like it, before getting in where the eye actually is, like the eyeball, we're just getting in the socket of it. Kind of try to sculpt around it where the eye would be, and then we can place the eyeball. Because it's like, where do you place the eye if it's just like like this? Well, you don't know. Like, can you, should you should just start carving in an eyelid here? I kind of work from the inside out. I think that's 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 just. Yeah. Is this a good way of doing it? Like, it's sort of like a blueprint for your eyeballs. Yeah, exactly. And it just makes it a lot easier for me. Because now we can just kind of like start to just work up here and just kind of see where we can get some eyeballs in here. So it's really important to have bony landmarks and then have areas where which are softer as well. So air bony landmarks would be like this region here, pretty much the entire skull. Um, we'd have it down here as well, we have the jaw and would have this region as well. The rest would be fairly soft, like the ear would be fairly soft, uh, obviously this entire skull part. So it's really important to differentiate between soft and hard tissue as well. And you have some areas which, like there's still a, bone, a lot of bony stuff here, but there's more flesh going on. Mm. So uh, just evaluate the silhouette a bit here. You can hit the V key. We just use the math cap uh, gray as well. If you're using one a math cap which has a bunch of um, spec to it, you might see too much spec in it for it to not be useful. Yeah, really using this sort of pseudo silhouette mode is, is yeah. a great way to check your design. It's we use it quite a lot just yeah. because you don't get distracted by proportions yeah. and or or like you know sort of detail on the inside. You just you can focus on your proportions. Super important. Like it's like if your proportions aren't working, nothing else is really working. I also prefer to work in perspective mode, where this is without, this is with. <laughs> it just looks more natural. It just looks more like the way it would actually look in, in real life. Yeah. A tip here regarding the ears is like, if you want to look like 
like it's super angry, you just make them really more spiky. And if you want to make it more docile, you can just put a bit of an angle to them. It's kind of like a dog, which is which is really aggressive. His ears will just be pointing straight upwards. I'm also just thinking about the main shapes here, like getting nice, clean shapes. Like you can see here, uh, the, the, the stigmatic here, the cheekbone has this nice curve to it. It's not like this, though you can do that as well. It's more just like getting big, strong shapes here. Maybe you got punched a lot in the cheek. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might have. I mean, he's a lower ranking uh, soldier for, from the north of UK. So. That's true, that's true. <laughs> A lot of uh, a lot of brawls up brawls up there in the pubs. I just had a thought. I, I wonder what a orc dog would look like. <laughs> <laughs> would it also speak British? <laughs> yeah, it would bark in a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in one of those like the northern British accents. Yes, 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 of course. So you can see here that at this point, you know, it's just a few minutes into it, but no no teeth or anything. This is like maybe the number one issue I keep seeing people do. Over detailing too quickly. Oh yeah, <laughs> that that's it. Uh, really, just work work your way up. Mm. You you can go high poly. We're not talking here about low poly versus high poly. We're talking we're talking like uh, like detailing. Obviously, you can't get too many details in if you stick to low poly. But it's more that certain brushes, like the clay brushes, they work really well with high poly. Yeah. But then it's also tempted to to add too much stuff to it. Like my approach for this kind of stuff is always um, I exhaust the current subdivision level yeah. I'm at, like yeah, or you know whatever the sort of dynamesh level I'm at. And if I can't, when I can't get any more detail out of that, then I start to subdivide. I think that's a really good way. Because of doing it. that that's just a like you know the whole too much power and yeah. responsibility <laughs> and whatever that, that is, seriously it happens even even if you're an experienced sculptor and you like you have you can just sit there and you can do whatever you want eventually you'll find yourself oh crap i added too much detail already yeah. but by limiting yourself like this you ensure that you get the most out of the current sort of subdivision level mm. It's a really good point. I, I mean, I, we we both seen this in production as well. You have some people who <laughs> they just uh, yeah they they just keep squeezing details out of it, and we're like, look, the foundation isn't working. You've got to go back to it, and they just refuse to do it because details, man, details are cool. Details are cool, and they are important for sure. They're important, but most of the time, you probably you probably see a creature more on like like this than you will see him like this. Yeah. So it's it's just more important that the details are working. And it's it's, it's in an interesting point with the whole when you start adding detail when the foundation is sort of broken because mm. it'll it's not obvious from the beginning. Like you look at it and you can see that something is missing. Yeah. And you just can't see what it is because there's just so many pores and scars yeah. or whatever on top. Um, once you take those away it becomes really apparent that oh the secondary forms are completely missing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now we can just see we're just blocking in some nose here and a bit of the mouth here. Still very low poly. But uh, I mean, you could also do this in more high poly. Like, honestly, it just depends uh, what you prefer to do. Sometimes I'm doing this in high poly, and sometimes doing low poly. But the point is, you want clean shapes going around here. So we can also just um, take Dynamesh resolution, which we find all the way in the bottom here, and just we can just increase this a little bit here. And then just control drag. Now we can see we went from like 20,000 to like 200,000. So we just increased it by around 10 now. Because we, we do, of course, need more resolution at the end as well. Yeah. Like, like this here isn't really going to fly. Yeah, like it's it's really hard to add, you know, lips. And yeah. <laughs> the nostril stuff and stuff like yeah, that. You exactly. can have the general shape of the nose and the general shape of the mouth. But, yeah. you know, it's just, I guess it's like, it's figuring out... I think, I think that takes a long time to learn as well. It's like, okay, at what point do I start detailing? Yes. Like, when am I allowed to detail? I mean, obviously, you decide because you're the one sculpting. <laughs> yeah. There's no one setting the rules for there this. There is no flip normals police yet. Oh, there should be, though. Yeah. The flip normals <laughs> police. I feel like, though, there is a little bit. It's uh -huh. like, you know, you have people on the Discord and, you know, people posting stuff. And you're like, oh, you should improve this and you can yeah. do this. I feel like that's that could be like the flip normals police. Yeah, it's a little flip normals police. <laughs> It's a good, the good kind of police. Here. It's like we have our own police state within the Discord. <laughs> yeah, a very kind police state. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. So for anyone who would do want to join the Discord as well, that uh, you can find that on the hub.flipnormals.com. There's mm. a link on the top there. Uh, it's just a nice little place where you can get proper feedback. You can also like message us directly there. I mean, feel free to message us on any social media as well. Uh, if, I mean, if you're doing sculpts like this yeah. and you're and you're just and you want to show us, you want to get feedback, the Discord is actually a really good place to get feedback. And the best thing about it is it's free. 
Yes. Not like there's no Patreon you have to <laughs> sign up for. Right? No, 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 no. You can just join it and. No, none of that jazz. Be equal with everyone else. Except for us because we're the admins. Yeah, we're pink. All right. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the only difference. <laughs> so now we're just getting in like some basic lips here. And when working with lips, I'm not necessarily thinking too much about the specific shape of the lip. I'm kind of thinking about the shape around the lip, mm. which kind of sounds a bit counterintuitive. But um, if you get that right, the lips kind of fall into place. The same with the eyes as well here. We still haven't really touched the eyes here. I, I've been more focused on like, getting like the area around it to be right. Because if that is right, then stuff just falls into place here. You can see the Henning is going around and not focusing on one area yeah. too much at a time. It's like jump from the from the nose and you do the the nasal labial fold, go down to the mouth, yeah, like just the lips a little bit, then go up to the eyes. It just ensures that you don't take one part of your sculpt up to a hundred before you've taken the other up to like ten. Yeah, I think that's super important. Like it's more like a. It's kind of like a nerdy, nerdy rendering metaphor here. It's kind of like a progressive render here <laughs> versus like a bucket render. Like a bucket render would do like finish this area yeah. and finish this area, but then you're ending up with with areas which, you know, they might not work at all, and maybe you're running out of time. And particularly yeah. if you, if you're working like our background is in film, and if you're working on that, then you uh, your supervisor is like, hey, can we see a version of this? And you're like, y well, not of the foot. <laughs> you, you can, can see a version of the nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, so, I think that's a really good metaphor because it, when you sort of do the progressive uh, sculpting style, yeah. it allows you to see the whole picture, mm. not necessarily all the way detailed all the way, but it allows you get a good allows you to get a good overview of what the finished sculpt will actually look like. Yeah. So we'll actually just save out uh, some of this just under. Let's make a little folder for you guys. Uh, see folks. Just so you can have uh, just so you can have some a couple of different versions as we go along. Uh, or no one. So you, you can, if you if you want to follow along from this stage here, you can totally do that. Mm. At this point, you can just load this up and just start sculpting. Oh, you saw that? There is actually a bug in Seabrush here now. Uh, uh, this is super annoying. So what happened now is pen pressure disappeared. The way to fix that is to Alt Tab out, <laughs> and then Alt Tab in again. You can see now it's fixed. That's a great feature. <laughs> yeah. It's been there. It's and it's, it's been there for so long. Yeah. I, I, it's like the Wacom driver just disconnects or something yeah. when you save a Z tool. So don't panic. Just Alt Tab in and Alt Tab out again. So you're probably gonna see that while you're like while you're saving. Mm. Yeah, because I, th I, th I feel like this stage here, getting to like this point, maybe a bit further, might be the hardest one because yeah. this is where you're laying down a foundation. A mm. lot of it is like go crazy with some brushes, but I really think this is a hard one. Which is also, I can confirm, it's hard to talk and sculpt at the same time. <laughs> Thanks, <buddy. laughs> I just have to talk. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll do it the other way around. Yeah, next then time. you'll feel my wrath. <laughs> and you'll sit here and just be like, man, it's totally fine, it's so easy. <laughs> so it's also super important to just look at it from a distance as well. Because it's really easy to get caught up in like this region and just like start mm. sculpting here. So I think the ears need a, bit, a little bit more love now as well. So for the ears, I prefer to really make them nice and curved, like this. And then I, I also prefer to use a standard brush. Also, when working on really thin surfaces like this, you probably want to use backface mask. Backface masking you can find up here or under brush auto masking and backface masking. We should have like a pop-up, like pro tip, pro tip. Pro oh tip. yeah, because <laughs> people love those pop-ups. Yeah. <laughs> Click here, like you have to like subscribe to a newsletter. Yeah. To get this. <laughs> yeah, this video is using cookies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be really annoying. <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to the ear, I'm kind of like separating into a couple of different parts. So you have, a, you have a, a, uh, an area going all the way around here. And then you have the lobe here. And then you have this little guy here. And then you have like the shape going in here. So if you can get these right, you, you kind of have an ear. This is pretty much what varies between like monkeys or humans or like mm. orcs or what this might be is pretty much proportion. If you if you know how to do a human ear, you can do you can do pretty much any ear. So I'm just focusing here now with the standard brush and very few things I do use the standard brush for. I just like it for because I get like really nice and clean lines here. The standard brush is super underrated, I think. Yeah. It's 
Well, it's because it's the standard brush. <laughs> and everyone yeah. goes like, well, you know, I just want to experiment with the, with the real brushes. Mm, like insert train brushes. <laughs> <laughs> train brush. <laughs> So now we're getting this shape in. So you just gotta sculpt a lot of ears for this here to just kind of make sense. Uh, I still I still remember like all of these parts on the ear have names, like the yeah. the trachea, the the concha, or like stuff like that. I I don't remember it. The helix. Yeah, helix, anti-helix, anti you know, it's just like but just learn the shape. Yeah. It's really not I, I feel like it's not I mean, you can totally learn the names if you want yeah. and be like super badass. And like, oh, here, I'm, the anti helix goes this way, yeah. but it's, I don't think it's necessary. No, it, it, we were talking about this in some other videos about should you learn anatomical names? And I think it's useful to learn general anatomical names. It's mm. like uh, uh, the metaphor I kind of like to use is I'm looking for a better one, but I think this works. It's kind of like street names. Like, I, we live in London now, and I know the city pretty well now. Also, not like your street, street name. Ah, no. I was, but street name. <laughs> yeah, oh, we're okay, not, okay. not talking about Little Henning or... <laughs> <laughs> little Henning! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, we're not talking about gangster names. That's your street name. <laughs> yeah. No, we're talking about like street names. Like L London, I know London pretty well. If somebody is like, where is the street? I'm like, I have no idea. But I know, I know what the, the neighborhood is about, and I know mm. like what you can find there. So... It's kind of with anatomy as well. If somebody is like uh, the sternocleidomastoid, this muscle muscle here, you're like, yeah, you might know the name of it, but it's more important to know the function of it and the shape of it. Yeah. I work with some of the most talented modelers ever, and they don't know any names, but man, they can sculpt like crazy. Mm. Yeah, I feel like that's what I did in the beginning as well. It's like learning the names is a good way to... Uh, pretend that you know anatomy. Yes. <laughs> because if, if you can like just spew out all the names, like, man, okay, that dude knows his shit. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out, you know, I, uh, I didn't know my shit. No. I just uh, I just knew the names. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how useful is that if you can't actually sculpt? Yeah. Yeah, it's like learn figure drawing, don't learn medicine. <laughs> Even though, of course, learning medicine might help as well if you want to be a doctor and all that. Uh, but uh, I'm doubting most people watching this want to be a doctor. Yeah, I, I actually, I actually applied to medical school before yeah. all of this. And now you're an artist. And here I am. <laughs> what happened? Well, quit you? my job to become a full-time teacher. <laughs> uh, doing yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. could have been a doctor. <laughs> yeah, could have been a doctor. <laughs> but instead, I get to, you know, get to talk to you guys. Yeah, it's called monsters. And yeah, I, I feel like it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's better that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I have no regrets about going into art. No. So this ear, I mean, ears are tricky. They're just tricky things. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a seashell or like a whole body by itself, or like, it's like an abstract thing. It's obviously there is a lot of function to the ear, like how, how sound travel in here and avoiding bacterial infections and all that jazz. But it's not an apparent function to it. <laughs> I can't look at it and be like, oh, of course this is shaped this way because of this, these reasons. While like looking at like the, the eye is shaped that so that you, you know you can you can open and close your eyes, which totally makes sense. But uh, the ear, you can yeah. you don't have an intuitive understanding of how the ear? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Useless human. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just trying to get some like, extreme shapes here because I know that I'm going to soften them up later on. So like getting this, a bit crazy, but like <laughs> just getting like the shapes to be a bit extreme. Because yeah. what happens is this shape is like that and you're going like, ah, oh, let's soften a bit up like that. And you're up with something softer. So I always try to just make them a bit more extreme. That's one of the things that, oh God, you got yeah. hit in the face. I think if I actually like that, I think I like something more like, uh, I actually have a reference here of like a chimp on our side here. Mm. I think I like something more like that. It's a bit more like, uh, uh, gorilla, more orc-like, mm. whatever orc-like might be. I mean, who knows what an orc is? It's like more vampire-y. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think orc is just like Northern, Northern or English, English person just hit in the face. <laughs> exactly. We're going to get so much hate for this. Yeah, we're going to get, get some angry letters. <laughs> Luckily, this isn't going on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe it is. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, this exact section is going on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, now you know what's in store. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you're in Twitch chat and people are there, they're like, oh, hello, YouTube from the future, <laughs> yeah. the past. Yeah. What were we talking about? Uh, ears. Ears, ears, yeah, ears yeah. and noses and British people being punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just got knocked out of the World Cup as well. Oh, they did? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, recording, we're recording this like two days afterwards. Uh, 
Yeah, sorry guys. It was like the single thing holding Britain together. <laughs> and now they're out. I remember seeing like people just throwing beer around. That was oh, yeah. what I woke up to on Twitter at some point. Yeah, there was so much hope in the country. <laughs> it's all gone. And if you're from the future where we know what's going to happen with Brexit, I don't really know what to do with this information. You can't really email us, <laughs> but we probably know as well. But uh, <laughs> We've left the country. <laughs> yeah, we've probably left the country. We've been kicked out. Yeah. Because uh, we are foreigners, after all. That's true. And that is the worst thing you can be in Britain today. Oh yeah, that's because we take uh, we've taken the job. Yeah. Actually, we've given the jobs back now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have. So we're like the best kind of foreigner. Yeah, we are. I feel like we should talk about the orc though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, at some point though, you just have like you just gotta block it in and just yeah. refine it. So <laughs> we are now blocking in <laughs> and I, refining it. Is that that just gets so boring? You know, you have yeah. those tutorials where. It, it is just a commentary on what you're doing currently. Yeah. And it ha doesn't help anyone. No. Like So there I press the S to yeah. bring up the menu for brush size. I'm hitting the Alt key and now I'm not hitting the Alt key. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a tricky one because uh, there is some theory like we talked about, like hard and soft areas. But now there is just a part where it's just labor. Mm. It's kind of like... There are kind of like stages. Right now, the primary forms are not blocked out. Like, we're still struggling with the eye here. There is nothing here yet. It's still just blocking everything in. And then you have everything is blocked in, then you're subdivided, and then it's taken up to the next level. So there are kind of like phases. This phase is still very much blocking. So just getting the psychomatic in here. We also have um, the best reference ever, which is a mirror. Mm. Which yeah, this is actually a self-portrait of him. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <this. laughs> well, I mean, you've never appeared on video, so who knows? Uh, that's true. And, you know, your profile picture could be made up. It could it be another person. Could be you. Could be me. Yeah, could, could be me. Guess we'll never figure <laughs> yeah. out. Because there is no way we can ever appear in video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do some eyes here. So eyes are tricky, just because... Not necessarily because the shape itself is so tricky, though it is a bit hard, but it's just because you gotta just treat it with so much love and care. If the eyes are not gonna be working, I mean, game over. Like, nothing else is gonna be working at this point. It's interesting as, as humans, right? We're so trained to look at stuff and recognize faces, expressions, and things. You know, that's yeah. why you have Jesus toast. <laughs> and so, eyes is something that we look at a lot. Yeah. You know, when we talk to a person, but well, I, I actually look at the mouth when I talk to mm. people, which I guess it actually freaks out a lot of people, apparently. <laughs> um, but I don't know, just, that's just where I look. Most yeah. people, I guess, look at the eyes. Yeah. Um, and so, so you, you get exposed to eyes all the time. Mm. So if there's just a, something that's a little off, mm. it's just, you probably can't explain why, but you just go, this looks weird. Yeah. Yeah. No, you got to spend, spend time on that. And, and when it comes to eyes as well, you just gotta observe eyes. You really gotta observe eyes. Yeah. And I mean, that's true for everything. Like we have like five reference pictures on it right now. This on the second monitor. Uh, some of this is from like actually Lord of Rings orc. Uh, one is of a chimp. And then there are some, some general pieces of reference which might help you. Uh, I'd say get as many, as much reference as you need, which is probably more than you think. Yeah. Like, when I've been doing like a serious sculpt, I, I have reference of every single part. I have the nose, the mouth, of all different parts here. Now we're also going in with a damn standard here and just making the upper eyelid really thick here. Because uh, the eyelid is thicker than you think. It's way thicker than you think. Unless you think it's really thick. Yeah, and then it's probably not that thick. No, then it's probably not <laughs> thick. But you probably don't think it's that thick. <laughs> no, because you actually do see that a lot. Is yeah. people making super thin eyelids. And that's, I think it's because people sort of, they look at the eyelid where it sort of um, meets the eyeball. Right? Mm. And that, that specific part of the eyelid it, it is not very thick. No. It has the same thickness all the way around, but there's a lot of a lot of you know, there's a lot of skin, there's some I think there's some fat now that's about the eye. So there's a lot yeah. of skin just covering it there. Um, and you can get very different feelings or feel sort of feels to your sculpt depending on how you make your eyelids. Yeah. You know, some people have those very high raised uh, eyelids so, like the top lid is very tall yeah. and some some people have more like where the skin droops down on the eyelid so you don't really see the top eyelid a lot yeah. and all those things really affect what you're yeah some people have like. like this kind of stuff yeah, like yeah. The, you have multiple layers here you have like you have the general eyelid and then you have like the one above it here and this here could be like this or it could really be like like mm. this drooping down like crazy 
Nice. You get them love with old people. Yeah. Because yeah, you do. the muscles just get tired. Yeah. You know, as you get older, you've been using your muscles for a long time, yeah. especially the muscles in your face, yeah. as you know, that's what you use to emote with and you talk, you, you make facial expressions all the time, so they get worn out.